All right, we've reached a brand new section where we're actually going to start talking about choosing your market. How are you going to find out what is the best market to sell in? So let's crack on. Now, the first thing I would say that you need to uh, get out of your mind uh, and it's a, it's a big rookie mistake. It's something I've done in the past is that you don't need to find the next amazing trend. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of my students in the past, they feel like somehow they've got to find the next most amazing product that everybody's going to want and they're going to put it on their site and then somehow, you know, everybody's going to pile in and they can make an absolute fortune uh, and be well ahead of the curve. Now, you might be a marketing genius uh, and, you know, you might be able to do that. For, but for us lesser mortals, uh, it's extremely, extremely unlikely. So please don't spend a lot of time focusing on what you think might be the next amazing trend. Because in fact, what you want to do is to sell into an established market. You are looking for products that are already selling well in markets that are already creating a demand for those products. So take the guessing out of it. You can see that the product's selling well. We'll take that product and we'll also promote it. Now the way that I do this is I use AliExpress itself and I also use Amazon. So I'm gonna jump over to those sites and I'm gonna show you exactly the process that I go through to choose a market or in fact let the market choose me. Okay, so here I am on AliExpress and let's choose something at random from the, the big menu here. So I'll go jewelry and watches and I'll go keychains. Lots of stuff on here, but basically the thing I want you to focus on is this sort by, okay? We can sort by best match, orders, newest, price, etc. If you search by orders, then what happens is, is it shows you the top selling items first of all, even tells you how many orders there have been. So this kind of, <laughs> Uh, fluffy keychain thing, uh, which has 11 colors available apparently, is that they've sold 15,000 of those, which is amazing. Now, you could come back to this in a week and see how many orders are you know there will be this time next week. Maybe it's 17,000, maybe it's 18,000. You're going to get a feel straight away for how much in demand a product like this is. Now, there's I know this is a kind of crazy product, but it's right in our price range as well. This thing is less than a dollar. You might remember from the very first slides when we talked about drop shipping, and I talked about um, you know looking for products that are actually four dollars ish or less, and we will get into this in a future lecture more precisely about how we go and uh, choose our correct price points. But this thing is super cheap, and I could put this onto my website and sell it for multiples of this and make some serious product, uh, serious profit. Excuse me. Um, this one over here, these little uh, various key rings here, minion key rings, thirteen thousand of them. You know, this, this is, uh, these are crazy products that will sell well, I guarantee you. And all I've done is just clicked at random into some sort of market, some sort of category on here, and it's telling me what I'm selling. So I can see this sells, so I'll take it. Okay, now I'm over here on Amazon, and I've actually gone straight to the dog ID tags and collar accessories, just for example. Now, you know that I'm in the dog niche now, and I want to give you as much information about that dog niche because, you know, it's great to teach you with it as well, but it might give you some interesting ideas. You might want to get involved with it yourself. There's plenty of space for all of us. Um, so in on Amazon, you don't have the same information that you have on AliExpress in terms of the number of orders, but you do have information about reviews. So just taking this first one here with these various dog tags, um, if you look at the number of reviews there, we're approaching 4,000. Now, typically, for every 100 products sold, one person will leave a review. So we're talking about 400,000 of those things being sold. That's maybe even a bit too much. But you get the idea. You can quickly see which products sell extremely well by just using the reviews. Now, the other thing I really like about Amazon is if I click into this, you know, let's say I've got an interest in that and I'm thinking about it. When I come down towards the bottom of the page here, I start to get products that are related to this item. This this part here is extremely useful. Now, you know, I now see this uh, iPooch 6 squeaker no stuffing plush dog toy. That's a little bit out of our price range, but I would have never have thought about that if I hadn't have come down here. Maybe I could find that product if I think it's cool and would sell 
for a better price from another supplier. That said, if I look at the number of reviews, maybe it's not selling great, but it may have just come onto the market. So I can be led by this. I can be led by Amazon. You know, I'm not being restricted. I'm not coming in here saying I must sell this product and that's it. What I do is I come in, I see a product. I think that's quite interesting. Then I'll come down to the sponsored products, the, re the related things, you know, the things that people also bought, if you like. And I'll see where the journey takes me until I find the product that I want. So that's how I do it in a nutshell. I, I start with a very broad mind and I just let myself drift through these websites until I find things of interest. Okay, And those are the things that I'm going to put on my site. All right, so we're back on our slide now and I gave you a brief tour of AliExpress and Amazon and how I use it at a very high level to sort of let me find products that could be interesting. Now the other question that pops up very soon, if not straight away, is should I go niche or should I go general? You know, should I focus straight in on those dog tags and forget about everything else? Or should I go general and just sell stuff from gardening products to dog tags to this to that, whatever? If you are, if this is your first journey into e-commerce, which it almost certainly is, I encourage you to go general for the moment, okay? You want to just cruise through those sites, find interesting stuff. It's going to spark all kinds of stuff in your brain uh, and uh, it's going to really get you a feeling for what's going on. You've got a fairly general domain name as well. You know, I've got Tim's Hot Deals, for example, and, you know, that, that's pretty general. I can put on any product I want into onto my particular website. Now, as time goes by, you will find products that sell. You just will. You know, from here, a few weeks' time, you know, a couple of months' time or whatever, you're going to see products that really sell. And you might find that those dog tags, for example, really sell. And you might end up creating a website called, you know, amazingdogtags.com. And all you do is sell dog tags. But let, let the process start wide and go towards niche. All right. So the thing you want to think about as well while you're looking at these various markets and the products within them is that people will pay to get problems solved or passions fulfilled. All right. So a, a problem solving product might be, say, a, uh, something that gets the core out of an apple, for example, that much easier in their kitchen. I don't know. Stupid example. But, you know, it's solving a problem for them. And if it's the right price point, they will pay for it. Passions could be something like uh, clothing for dogs. <laughs> We've all seen that. Generally speaking, dogs don't need clothes. It's the customers that love their dogs and they're fulfilling that passion, that love for their dog by buying those products. Those are two extreme drivers, the problem solving and the, uh, the passion fulfilling that will make your customers buy products in your chosen market. So keep that in mind as we go through the course. Now, one of my niches is the dog jewelry niche. This is not jewelry for dogs. This is, you know, this might be a necklace that a woman wears with, uh, or a man, uh, uh, with a little uh, Labrador pendant perhaps on it because they've got a Labrador and they love Labradors. Now, this is fulfilling a, pa a, fulfilling a passion. It's a great example. It's not solving a problem. But, you know, people will love their Labradors in my example and they want to show that love to, their, to other people or just to themselves. It makes them feel good when they look at it and that's why they buy. So I hope in this particular section here, there's a lot of information here I know. Take a moment, perhaps go back through it again and really think about the markets and the products within the markets. Do not stress it. This is a classic case for what we call analysis paralysis, where you literally spend the next three months trying to think of what market and products you need to do. All right. Please don't do that. Just go on those sites. AliExpress and Amazon and just start surfing around, let your imagination run wild a little bit, you know, and just click. And before you know it, you're going to find a product and you're going to think, wow, that's pretty cool. That's selling. That's in a market that's interesting. That solves a problem or that fulfills a passion. I'm going to start there. All right. Good luck, guys. I'll see you on the next section.